The United Nations is warning the withdrawal of funding for its main aid agency in Gaza could lead to the collapse of the humanitarian system. And this is coming after more than eight countries suspended funding for the United Nations Relief and the Work Agency after the Israeli government said that 12 of its staff members were involved in the October 7th Hamas attack. In response to this, the aid agency put out a statement saying the allegations are horrifying. However, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has said the full independence and investigation over this allegation is underway. Meanwhile, the United States is calling for a thorough investigation to ensure accountability of allegations that the United Nations aid agency staff were involved in the October 7 attack. The U.S. Department spokesperson Matthew Miller stressed that there is no other humanitarian player in Gaza who can provide necessary aid such as food, water and medicine at the scale the UNRWA does. He also commented on the drone strike in Jordan that killed three U.S. troops, noting that Washington desires to see Iraq government take actions against those responsible for the attacks. We very much support the work that UNRWA does. We think it's critical. Uh, there is no other humanitarian player uh, in Gaza who can provide food and water and medicine to, at the scale that UNRWA does. Um, we want to see that work continued, uh, which is why it is so important that the United Nations take this matter seriously, that they investigate it, that there is accountability for anyone who is found to have engaged in wrongdoing, uh, and that they take whatever other measures are appropriate to ensure that this sort of thing cannot happen again. We very much hope that uh, the government will reverse the steps it's taken, um, but we are ready to snap back our sanctions uh, if they don't. As you saw what we announced today, um, uh, there is one general license uh, with respect to gold trading that we have already revoked. Um, there is another one that is set to expire in April that pertains to the oil industry. And absent a change in uh, course from the government, we will uh, allow that general license to, uh, to expire and our sanctions will snap back into place. There is still time for the Maduro regime to change course. There is still time for them to allow a free and fair election. We are hopeful uh, that that's what they'll do. But if they don't, we are prepared to implement our sanctions. We do not seek conflict with Iran. We do not want to see escalation of this conflict. We do not believe this, that escalation is in the interests of the United States, not in the interests of Iran. It's not in the interests of anyone in the region. But at the same time, we will take the appropriate steps to defend U.S. personnel, defend U.S. interests, and to hold accountable those who go after and injure and harm and kill U.S. personnel. We will hold accountable any organization that we find to be responsible for attacks on U.S. personnel in the region. As it pertains to the government of Iraq, of course we have said that we want to see the government of Iraq do more to hold accountable, um, to investigate, to arrest, to prosecute uh, those who are responsible for attacks on U.S. forces. Iran-backed Hezbollah has announced the suspension of hostile operations against U.S. troops as Washington ponders its response to a deadly drone attack that killed three of its soldiers. U.S. President Joe Biden said that he had decided how to respond to the Jordan attack but did not elaborate. Hezbollah's Secretary General Abu Hussein al-Hamdawi said in a statement which partly reads, As we announce the suspension of military and security operations against the occupation forces, in order to prevent embarrassment of the Iraqi government, we will continue to defend our people in Gaza in other ways. However, Iran has warned it will retaliate against any attack in its interests. Conversations are still ongoing on Gaza's humanitarian aid reaching thousands of civilians in need. The Security Council members met at the United Nations headquarters in New York to address the deteriorating situation in the Gaza Strip, calling for urgent assistance to help the affected people. This is about volume, quality, speed uh, and continuous uh, delivery of humanitarian um, and commercial goods to reach the civilians uh, of Gaza, and the mechanism uh, when up and running can really help facilitate that. It helps us to track, it helps us to enhance the transparency that we know what's coming in, whom it's for, it helps with the verification, and obviously to know if it really reached the civilian population. First of all, when you're looking at the supply routes and access, um, there are uh, opportunities obviously to do more via land, from Jordan, the Israeli government and Jordanian government are in a very constructive discussion around that. If we're looking at uh, additional supplies and the logistical review, 
um, sort of the support to the Egyptian Red Crescent Society. The question is, can we do more? Can we do it differently? Under the leadership, of course, of the Egyptian authorities and the Egyptian Red Crescent Society. So I've, I've detailed a few of the options. And of course, also the importance of land routes and arrival of goods uh, in Israel uh, and what the options are there. The Security Council members received their first briefing and urged all parties to engage with Mrs. Kag to facilitate the implementation of the mandate as reflected in Resolution 2720. The Security Council members, in this regard, expressed their concern regarding the dire and rapidly deteriorating humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip, and they emphasized the urgent need to expand the flow of humanitarian assistance to civilians in Gaza. The United States fully supports Senior Coordinator Cog's efforts to streamline and accelerate the delivery of life-saving humanitarian assistance. Her success is the UN's success, it is the Council's success, and her work is essential. As was just mentioned, more humanitarian assistance, including food, medicine, fuel, and other supplies need to get in the hands of civilians in Gaza. Expanding commercial access is also critical to meeting basic needs and addressing food insecurity. And every party in the region must work with Senior Coordinator Cog and her team to sustainably scale up aid deliveries. There cannot be progress toward a durable peace without a resolution of the hostage crisis. As Secretary Blinken noted yesterday, the proposal on the table is strong and compelling. It envisions a longer humanitarian pause than we saw in November, which would provide an opportunity to get more hostages out and life-saving humanitarian assistance in. There has to be accountability for anyone who participated in this attack on October 7th, but we also know that UNRWA plays a critical critical role in providing life-saving assistance to Palestinians, including essential food and medicine, shelter, and other vital humanitarian support. In the meantime, South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa has warned that the nation's case against Israel at the United Nations could lead to foreign interference in this year's crucial election, where his party faces the risk of losing its majority. The International Court of Justice asked Israel to prevent harm to Palestinians during its crackdown on Hamas, but stopped short of an immediate ceasefire. Israel denies the genocide allegations. Mr. Ramaphosa, while addressing the ruling African National Congress, emphasized how South Africa's stance exposed the alleged atrocities by Israel and criticized countries allowing genocide in Gaza. Back may also focus on our domestic politics and our electoral outcomes in order to pursue a regime change agenda. Now, some people have said this was a David and Goliath type of uh, contest. So we must be aware that whilst we have done what we believe was driven by our conscience and our principles, and whilst we also went and did the right thing and take this matter to the courts that were set up by those who were there in 1948 or so as they set up that court, uh, we are being blamed for taking the matter to the very court that they set up. <laughs> we didn't take this court, case to a kangaroo court. Let's bring in the former lecturer on diplomatic and consular relations, Law Nasarawa State University, Kefi, Mr. Chuku Emeka Eze, who joins us from our studio in Abuja. Thank you very much, Mr. Eze, for joining us on The World today. <clears throat> Thank you. Good evening. Let's begin with your assessment of the conflict so far. Mm -hmm. The, my assessment is that the conflict is becoming hydra-headed. It is heading in two areas that we are hitherto uh, not conceived. For instance, there is a report that a dangerous object was found in the Israeli embassy or around it in Stockholm, Sweden. So, and the one already on the Red Sea we can see the impact of 
that war on uh, the Houthi attacks on uh, commercial shipping, especially those of America and the uh, United Kingdom. We are equally feeling it in Iraq, where the Iran backed Hezbollah movement has uh, been attacking American forces, including the, the recent killing of uh, three American servicemen, although they have suspended further attacks. We are feeling it also in Paris, where a resolution has just taken place uh, within the last uh, few days for aid, to aid delivery to Palestinians to continue, notwithstanding the crisis rocking the United Nations Relief and Works Agency. That's uh, UNRWA. So some of their employees, 12 to be specific, has been reported by Israeli intelligence as having participated in the gruesome attack of October 7, 2023. And as a result, about eight countries have stopped funding of the United Nations uh, Relief Agency. Nevertheless, a country like Canada has pledged 40 million Canadian dollars to, to a World Food Org a program, World Food Program, and some other UN agencies, but definitely not the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, uh, to ensure that there is a seamless flow of aid delivery to the Palestinians. Part of the update is that some Israeli commandos operating or parading themselves as civil medics struck three militant Palestinian militants. So that was a decoy. They pretended to be civil medics and they killed about three of them. That has been condemned by the United Nations uh, High Commission for Human Rights, that uh, it, it, it is against uh, human rights to have done so, because as at the time they were killed, they were host uh, to combat they were not there as combatants. They were taking a, a medical attention when they were killed. So uh, a lot has happened in this war, and Israel has struck Dara, city of Dara in Syria, due to rockets coming from there. There are lots of rockets from Lebanon striking various parts of Israel, including Zderot. Tel Aviv, and other parts of, uh, of uh, Israel. And the war in Khan Yunis continues at a very high intensity. That's uh, Gaza. So another part of Gaza. Israel has reportedly found several kilometers of well laid out infrastructure for military use. And they claim to be dismantling it. The, the, the effect has been taken to the United Nations, and we, are, we have known the outcome, oh. including the ICJ, hmm. ICJ case by South Africa against Israel. Cesar, let me take you back Where to when you talked about... Come. Yeah, you talked about the disguise that happened yesterday where Israeli forces stormed a hospital killing three militants. Do you agree that this war is taking another dimension? I agree, because uh, uh, <laughs> the four Geneva Conventions of 1949 and the two additional protocols of, I think, 1976 or 7. So none of, none of them supports what Israel has done. And uh, they might be accused of a crime against humanity or war crimes, as the case may be which is punishable by the statute of the ICJ, the Rome Statute of the ICJ. Although it has not affected three people, may not be the reason why they could be taken the, to the ICC, but 
Uh, that has taken it to another dimension, because it's actually in breach of uh, uh, mm. the Geneva Conventions of 1949. Are right, so many it countries has taken a different dimension? Yeah. Many countries have already halted their funding to UNRWA. I mean, on allegations that its staff were involved in the October 7 attack. But on the humanitarian scale, there's starvation on the ground. People are in dire need of aid. The World Health Organization has also described the situation as hellish. What would be the bigger implication of this if aid stops there? Yes, uh, if there is... Um, you, you, one would need to have an understanding on how UNRWA works. They have been there for decades. And uh, it don't call United Nations <coughs> organ, uh, agency, but it is the staff uh, is dominated by Palestinians themselves. So they understand the people, the people understand them, they have schools, they have so many amenities. So they are part and parcel of the people. They don't see the, that United Nations agency, I mean, Palestinians. They don't see them as aliens or foreigners. They are as comfortable with it the way they are comfortable with Red Crescent from any of the Arab countries. So uh, if the supply of aid changes from UNRWA to any other agency, uh, Palestinians may see it as... Uh, these are strangers, these are aliens. They will, it will take time for them to adjust. But it shows that uh, one thing people should know is that in Palestine, some people don't see attacking the Jews as a crime. They feel it's a debt they owe to God to deal with enemies of Palestinian people. So whereas the world, many parts of the world will see it as, oh, this is heinous, this is gruesome, this is unfathomable, but as far as many of the Palestinians are concerned, they see it as uh, something to be proud of, that if you are killed, you become a martyr, and uh, there, are other, there are religious connotations to it. So, but it's unfortunate because once something is associated with the United Nations, it is expected that that thing should be unbiased, anything coming from that thing should not apply discrimination, whether by way of sex, gender, nation, or any other nationality, or by any other consideration, including color. So once something is associated with the UN and it goes into a scenario that takes people's lives and all that, certainly the world will frown at it, and it's going to affect the aid process, uh, having explained that, how close, how integrated that, that agency is to the Palestine. So but that is one side of it. The other side of it is the delivery. As long as the Israelis allow delivery, I think with what is on the ground, so many people need food, they wouldn't care even if it is given by the devil. So I think if there is more delivery, uh, Palestinians will be ready to accept it, whether it comes from that agency or okay. not. That's right. the way I look at it for now. All right, Mr. Ezra, before I let you go, we know the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, has already vowed to fight on, despite all that's happening at the moment, is also under mounting pressure from families of hostages held by Hamas. What should be the next course of action? The next course of action is for them to engage, for the Israelis to engage in intense negotiations with Hamas uh, in, in order for the hostages to be released. I've said it uh, several times that the uh, extension of Netanyahu's term on that seat will be dependent on whether the goals of the war have been, uh, have been achieved. And the major part of it is release of those hostages. Israelis don't play with their citizens. They can go to war because of one person and for this number of hostages to be held uh, outside Israel for a very long time, any prime minister who is superintending to, in this kind of situation will be under the pressure that Netanyahu has found himself. And the next election, we, the outcome will be determined by whether these hostages will be released. 
have been right. released or not. If they are not released, basically Netanyahu will be losing that. Thank you very much. Former lecturer on diplomatic and consular relations, Law, Nasara Western University, Kefi, Mr. Chukwemeka Eze. Thanks for your time and your contribution on the world today. Thank you.